In the Second World War, tanks were used in a variety of roles, from infantry support to breakthrough to exploitation. The major powers of the war conducted many experiments to figure out how best to use their new war machines, now much more refined than those from the First World War. In the spring of 1943, one of the most popular Allied doctrines was the shelling of an enemy position before assaulting it with infantry and armor after a short delay. However, it was found to be that the delay itself allowed enemy crews to reman their anti-tank guns and destroy advancing armor. Thus, the American and British armies decided they needed to develop an assault tank that could maneuver through an artillery barrage to destroy the unmanned guns. The obvious solution was to trial the Churchill heavy tank in this role. Heavily armored, it was the perfect candidate to shrug off the high explosive barrages of Allied artillery. During trials, the Churchills performed well, maneuvering through a field saturated with fire and taking no casualties, though a few tracks were thrown. While it was noted that optimal conditions allowed the Churchills to perform their duties unhindered, it was ultimately questioned if an assault tank was truly needed, or indeed when an assault tank was at all. To find the answer, we have to go back to the year of 1942. Development of the Churchill tank wasn't without its flaws. For a long time, the armor and firepower was insufficient to justify its sluggish speed for escorting infantry, and its production company Vauxhall was going to be asked to switch to the exclusive production of the better-regarded Cromwell tank. Furthermore, Vauxhall was suggested to produce a more heavily armored version of the Cromwell, which would have an armored side skirt and a composite turret, similar to the older Churchills. It was to be 32 tons and designated A32. At the same time, the English Electric Company was asked also to design an A32 tank. Fox Halls was to be an interim design, while English Electrics was to be the final heavy assault tank design. The British Army was also in contact with the American Army about their new design. The British tank mission had brought their designs for an assault tank to Aberdeen Proving Grounds, and the American Locomotive Company was asked to design a tank to their specifications, which would be known as T-14. It was decided that both English Electric and American Locomotive would each produce a pair of prototypes for trials in their respective countries. American Locomotive finished their prototype first. They took heavy inspiration from the Sherman tank and used a 500 horsepower V8 engine, though it would have been possible to mount a V12. Like the Sherman, the hull extended over the tracks for internal storage and was given sloping armor on the sides as well as the front. Because the British design called for side skirts to protect the suspension, the armor was extended over the bogies, somewhat a rarity in American design. The sloped armor was 100mm over the transmission, though reduced to 50mm higher up on the tank. The turret was a sloped 75mm on the front and 100mm around the sides. The T-14 had an identical turret ring to the Sherman, and could fit the standard 75mm gun. It was planned to replace this with the American 76mm gun when it became available, but nothing suggests this was ever completed. Some sources claim it could have mounted a 90mm gun, but this would have been exceptionally difficult if not impossible. Eventually, a prototype was shipped to Britain. Ultimately, the T-14 was abandoned in favor of the recently developed T-26, which would eventually result in the M-26 Pershing. On the other side of the Atlantic, work on the British design would see a trio of vehicles competing for the designation of A-33, sometimes called Excelsior. The three differed in a few aspects, but were otherwise similar. Pilots A, B, and C used different suspension systems, with A being inspired by the American T-1 Heavy, and both B and C using a railroad-inspired suspension. Only A and B were chosen to advance. The tanks all resembled a heavily armored Cromwell in dimension. Pilot A was armed with a 6-pounder, while Pilot B had the OQF-75. Ultimately, only Pilot B had a fully enclosed track and was chosen to go forward. The tank was given 4.5 inches of armor, and plans were considered to increase it to 6 inches, as well as arming it with a high-velocity 75mm gun, but this was deemed impractical. This was due to light criticism that a heavy tank with a 6-pounder gun had no practical use, but it was quickly pointed out that the venerable Churchill was designed this way as well. Pilots A and B were given trial runs of a thousand miles, picking up a lot of mud along the way, but ultimately failing due to technical and suspension issues. The A-33 program was thus cancelled. All was not lost, however, as another program had the potential to create the fabled assault tank. The A-38 program, nicknamed Valiant, was an attempt to create a similarly armored tank on the lightest possible chassis. The project changed hands through a number of companies, starting with Vickers and eventually ending up in the hands of the Rustin Hornsby Locomotive Company, 
whose goal was to design a heavily armored tank for use in the Far East. Eventually, designers were able to mount 4.5 inches of armor on a chassis weighing a mere 27 tons, taking inspiration from earlier tanks like the Matilda and Valentine. Unfortunately, the reduced weight came with a variety of drawbacks. The crew was incredibly cramped in the tank. Most damningly, the tank sat only 9 inches off the ground, which caused a large amount of issues while driving on bumpy terrain. Parts of the tank were exposed on the bottom, and in a jungle environment, would have been a prime candidate to be wrecked by the underbrush and roots. The tank itself only had a max speed of 12 miles per hour, and mounted a 6-pounder or OQF-75. The Valiant suffered a slow, painful death. During trials, the test driver reported that after 13 miles of driving he was exhausted, requiring around 150 pounds of pressure to operate the steering gear. The steering pedal was in a dangerous position and could seriously injure the driver's foot by trapping it under the floor plate. The gear levers had to be at one point operated with a crowbar and nearly broke the driver's wrist while changing gears. All of this, combined with the incredibly cramped design of the tank, convinced the officer in charge to end trials immediately as it was unsafe and exceedingly obvious that this tank was a total failure. He wrote a nearly three-page condemnation of the vehicle. It would seem that the price for such a low weight was simply too great. Somehow, the Valiant lived on, though not without major change. A Valiant II was created between 1943 and 44, but was much more sensibly designed. It took inspiration from the A33, using a Cromwell-style hull while keeping the pike nose, mounting the turret on a bigger chassis. The armor was quite thick, being 10 inches on the turret and 9 on the hull. The tank was to use a 400 horsepower Meteorite V8 with a Rolls-Royce gearbox. It would have mounted a 6-pounder, 75mm gun, or 95mm howitzer. Total crew would have still been 3. Nothing seems to have come of this, and there is no photographic evidence of its existence. While the assault tank concept was formally dead, the idea cannot be written off as simply a fleeting British fantasy. The desire to have a heavily armored tank for attacking fortified positions under fire can be seen in all major powers of the war. America created their Jumbo series of tanks, welding extra armor for the express purpose of shrugging off frontal AT gunfire. Germany and the Soviets favored their up-armored casemate designs. Wherever tanks were under the threat of anti-tank fire, so too was there a desire to render them irrelevant through protection alone. Even further, this concept can be seen in later designs like the T-28, Tortoise, and Mouse, but those are for another time. I hope you enjoyed learning about the history of the assault tank concept. Be sure to like the video and subscribe for future content. Until next time.